All right, guys, today we're going to talk about two lines, two lines. We're going to talk about the pocket line versus the shooting line. Okay, on every shot, there are two lines that needs to be considered, okay? Until you get to the point where you don't think about anything, you can just go pot a ball and, uh, and make it every time. Uh, you kind of have to, if you're a beginner or lower intermediate player, you need to kind of focus in on your aiming, okay? So, there are two lines. First, let's talk about the pocket line. Is this the pocket line? No. Pocket line is tied to the object ball and the pocket that you want to, to pot it in, okay? So, if you draw a line through the center of the object ball to the opening of the jaw, not necessarily the back of the pocket, unless you are completely straight on. If you have a little bit of an angle, center of the opening of the jaw, right through the center of the object ball. That's your pocket line. It's also your contact point, okay? So, contact point, if this line, your pocket line, goes right through the object ball, on the other side, it is the contact point. And that is where you need to make contact with the cue ball in order to pot that, okay? <laughs> so how many times have you seen a beginner, lower intermediate player, they go over here and they focus all in on this spot right here, the contact point, okay? And then they just go right down and they shoot. <laughs> they don't pay any attention to their shooting line, okay? The shooting line is the most important part of that. It is almost common sense to see where you need to hit the object ball to make it to the corner. Okay, it's good to have a look at that as well, but that's only about 20% of the equation for the whole shot. <laughs> the thing that you have the control over is your shooting line. The line that the cue ball needs to go on to make proper contact with the object ball. That is primarily what you should be focusing on. Okay, so go and have a look at this. That's fine. You know where you need to hit. Now this becomes the more important part of the stance. Your, your back foot needs to be on that shooting line. I usually say the top of my big toe, not the end of it, but the top of it. I'd like to stroke my cue right over the top of my back big toe. Okay, it needs to be on the shooting line. And when you get that alignment right, okay, right there, it's going right over my big toe, you can just drop into place and shoot. Now, how many times have you seen somebody, they really focus in on that contact point for the pocket line, and then they go ahead and they aim the center of the cue ball for that spot, and this happens. Why did that happen? <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, it's impossible to talk about um, contact points, shooting line, and your pocket line if you're not going to talk about aiming to a degree, okay? Now, I'm just going to quickly cover something called the ghost ball uh, visualization technique, okay? So, if I was to hit this ball in at the contact point right there, Let's have a look just to make sure that's right. Not quite right. All right there. Okay. Stay. All right. That is where my cue ball needs to make contact. So uh, it's important to visualize that. Okay. So as you uh, as you get more and more of a cut, as your cue ball may get more and more over here, the center of the cue ball. If that's your aiming line, your shooting line, the center of the cue ball without playing in English, will actually be aiming to miss the ball altogether. <laughs> okay? Because it is a ball replacement. When you visualize, visualize that the edge, the side of the cue ball, needs to make contact with the inside of the ball, it's a displacement uh, technique. Okay? So if you're straight on, it's no big deal, okay? That's pretty easy to understand that you need to hit the center of the cue ball to the center of the object ball, okay? 
So if I aim from over here, if I aim the center of the cue ball for the contact point, I'm going to be contact. The, the cue ball is not going to make contact at that point. It's going to make contact more thick. I'm going to hit it thick. Okay. Center of the cue ball to that point, like I already demonstrated. We hit it too thick. Okay. So you need to visualize the ghost ball. Yes, there are a numerous amounts of aiming techniques, and ultimately, most of them are going to leave you confused if you're a beginner. Okay, <laughs> practice and visualize. Good players don't really use aiming systems. Pros don't really. Yes, I know. SVB has a thing where he divides his tip in five, and, and so. But you know what? If he doesn't even think about that kind of stuff, he just pots balls because they've done it millions and millions of times on the table. They know the angle. They already know the shooting line. I mean the pocket line. They already know how to visualize which part of the cue ball is going to contact the object ball at the point you need. They already understand all that, okay? Now, so if I want to make contact here, I have to. Now, there, you can also, you've seen this before. You put the tip right underneath the object ball. You pull out about a half a ball, and then you can rotate over the cue ball. Okay, that gives you an idea of the ghost ball where you need to make contact with. But ultimately, I just need to make contact on that spot to get the pot. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about one of the factors that come into play when you're doing cut shots. All right, this is about, if I'm going center of the opening, that's about a 30 degree cut. Okay, um, so it is susceptible to cut induced throw, C-I-T, but there's no room really here between the ball and the pocket. So the cut induced throw is almost minimal effect, zero effect. <laughs> In fact, you have so much room, uh, so much margin of error on this shot um, that it's, it's, it's easy. All beginners can make it everything. There, there's no real factors. If you're playing side spin, there's a little bit of a factor, but we're not talking about playing side spin. In fact, if you're a beginner or a low intermediate player, even an intermediate player, you should be learning how to run out tables, not playing side spin. <laughs> Stay vertical on the cue ball and make sure you're trying to get on the right proper side of the shooting of the pocket line for every object ball that you are making shape on, okay? And you can do that 95% of the time without any side spin, okay? You can just play top, center, and bottom, all the variations in between there, without playing side spin, and you can run out tables. And when you can do that, you can start practicing, you should start practicing at that point, adding in side spin to some shots and seeing what happens. I'm not gonna get into what happens, but side spin changes several things, okay? <laughs> deflection, you got swerve, um, you got spin-induced throw. Not getting into that, all right? So now what if you have more space, okay, for the cue ball to travel? Okay, now, now I have more space. If I'm going to cut it to the same corner, okay, which way is my cue ball going to be going? That way, towards you, towards the camera, <laughs> okay? So there's a little bit of static friction when it hits this ball that it wants to make it go that way. So that means that although I'm cutting it for the center of the jaw, it might go to the left, to the this side of the pocket, okay? Because the cue ball is going that way. It wants to drag the object ball a little bit the same direction. So it opens up the angle on this shot. So. Technically, if you want to pot at center pocket, you actually have to overcut this just a little bit, okay? If you're shooting at a softer speed, okay? If you're hitting it firm, cut-induced throw isn't really a factor. But cut-induced throw is the, is the largest between 30 and 50 degrees, okay? Because you're hitting enough of the object ball at that point where friction grabs it and just throws it offline just a little bit. No spin on the cue ball. 
We're just talking about natural rolling cue balls here, okay? Or backspin or topspin, but whatever. Um, if I'm going to hit this shot in, technically I need to aim to overcut it. Now, if you've been playing pool for a long time and you're a ball potter, you don't have to think about that. Your brain has already figured out that that's how you make this shot, <laughs> all right? So technically I need to aim for the right side of the pocket to make it into the center if I'm shooting softly, okay? Cut and do so becomes a factor. Okay, and you can see how it still went in to the left side of the pocket, even though I was kind of aiming more for the right. That is cut induced throw in a nutshell. Now, if you're hitting a little bit firmer, cut induced throw really is not an issue, okay? Um, and that's one of the reasons why you see pros generally, they commit to their shots and they don't hardly baby them in, okay? They usually are hitting them at least a four to six weight, okay, um, which is a medium paced shot like this. Okay, I'm gonna play a little draw on this so I don't force a scratch, but uh, I'll hit it at a medium pace, aiming for the center of the jaw. All right, okay, so you don't have to worry. If you commit to the shot, hit it just a little bit firmer than a slow roll. Um, cut and just throw really isn't uh, a big deal, okay? Okay, so let's get back in to the shooting line versus the pocket line. On this shot, they are quite a bit different, okay? And if I'm taking it to this pocket again, my center of the cue ball is actually missing the object ball altogether because I have to cut this fairly thin. It's about a 65, 70 degree cut somewhere in there. Actually, it's probably more like 70 to 75, okay? So... Um, I'm not going to play any side spin on this, although typically I would play a little bit of left on this so that it checks it when it comes out the rail, especially if I have another object ball that's sitting right here that I need to take next. But I'm just going to play a soft draw shot so that I can hit this long rail first, hit this rail, and probably come back close to where the 11 is, okay? So I... Understand that my pocket line, my contact point, is right there. I can see that. So now I visualize my shot before I get down. I visualize my center of the cue ball needs to be over here. Okay? So I kind of visualize that ghost ball. I step in and we pot it. Okay? Just like that. And those are important shots to practice, by the way. You should be able to do those 10 times in a row at least, okay? I practice them a lot. I just practice about 100 of them. Um, so, uh, yeah. Now, if you wanted to hold that cue ball, like right here, you could play a little bit of side spin to kill it. But if you're a beginner and you're just kind of learning this stuff, don't be playing side spin. It's going to make you mess up the shots. <laughs> Learn how to run out a table playing vertically on the cue ball and picking your side of the pocket line that you want to be on in order to get natural shape without having to try to manipulate it every single shot okay i know some of you just love playing side spin on every shot you just love what it does when it hits the rail and grooves right over and yes it's cool and it's sexy but uh then all of a sudden you miss an easy shot because you're making it more difficult and you sell out the game okay so keep it simple <laughs> and uh, play vertical on the cue ball until you can run tables like that then introduce some side spin into your game okay all right guys in summary understand the two lines that you are dealing with okay yes you have the pocket line which in this case is the center of the opening of the pocket straight through the object ball creating a contact point on the other side of the object ball, okay? I can see that quite clearly here uh, without getting over there and, and examining it exactly. I, I understand where I need to make contact with, okay? The shooting part <laughs> is the part that is very important. Your shooting line, your cue ball shooting line. It's what you have control over in the situation. Yes, the contact point is very important, but the shooting line 
is there's more to it because your whole stance is going to be built around the shooting line. So when you stand back, you visualize the shot, whether you're using ghost ball or not or whatever, but uh, generally, subconsciously, people generally will use the ghost ball technique, even if they don't think that they are using it <laughs> because they're understanding where the cue ball needs to be displaced in order to make proper contact on your object ball. Okay, so you stand back for a second, examine your shooting line, and then build your stance around it, get right into it, and you let it go. And we got good shape on the eight.